Welcome back. We shall resume. Uh, we were talking about micro skills, and the first skill that we were looking at was uh, attending skills. We we are at the portion where we said attending skills can be uh, developed in three specific ways: through verbally, uh, non-verbally, through body language, through listening and observation. So we just completed the three Vs. We're going to be looking at the next one, which is um, the body language. So when we're looking at uh, uh, the body language, we're saying, uh, it, it, what is body language? It describes these messages, uh, the nonverbal messages that we send through the posture, through our gestures, through our movement, through our physical appearance, and maybe sometimes even how we come adorned or how we come dressed. So your body position should convey to your counselee your interest and your involvement. A positive or a good body language is demonstrated by a relaxed posture, uh, a steady eye contact, the nods of the head, which, uh, um, which can be occasional, and of course, uh, an occasional smile or a happy expression. So the, some of the important things as we look at body language is, of course, one is to face your uh, counselee and have a more open, relaxed, and attentive body po posture, as this definitely will assist in putting your uh, counselee at ease. Okay, um, uh, It's good to, at, at some point, to be able to lean forward slightly, Okay, especially your upper body a little bit towards uh, towards your counselee. You can use good gestures like head nods. Um, uh, also, to, to come appropriately dressed, to be appropriate in, uh, not to be a distraction to your counselee, not to come too shabbily dressed or not to come too uh, highly adorned, right? To, to keep away the distraction from the counselee. Uh, also, let your counselee uh, decide the physical distance between you and them uh, by sometimes letting them arrange their chair in a way for their individual comfort. But uh, make sure that you're also uh, you're also comfortable with that kind of a personal space boundary, right? So, so some uh, generally an arm's length or more is what is uh, what is recommended. There are it's okay to have like a table and chair. There are sometimes table and chairs are used, sometimes table and chairs aren't used. But generally, uh, a lot of times, table and chairs are kept away so that you know there's more openness uh, in the, um, through, the, through the session. Right? Um, something that we use is mirroring. Okay? And uh, this was suggested that uh, in a way to assist your counselee to relax. So counselors can include in their skills the matching of some nonverbal or, or body language. Like this may take some time to learn, but it begins with the counselor sitting in somewhat the same position as the client. For example, <clears throat> you know, if at first sight the, the your counselee is sitting at the uh, maybe at the edge of their chair, right, and with their maybe showing a little bit of uh, nervousness, the counselor can also reflect that kind of sitting a little bit more forward, putting your legs down. And as the client, as the counselee speaks more, you, the counselor can either lean forward to indicate, and when you're leaning forward, you're indicating empathy and understanding, or maybe slide back into the chair into a more relaxed position. So the, the conversation uh, gets, is, is helpful when, uh, you know, when you're also, you're also showing your counselee that you are with them in the space that they may be in. Okay, one of the things that we would want—I uh, I know this may not fit in here—but just to make a uh, mention about time, keep keep it structured. Okay, there should be a linear view of time. Be on time for appointments when you've asked them. 
uh, and stop on time, you know, because it's always good to, to respect the time of people, unless, of course, they're in the thick of a conversation, you could remind them, you know, we had scheduled for a one hour conversation, it may go on to a little more, is that fine with you? Or would you like to bring this up maybe the next time? So it's good to keep some of this in mind as you're discussing this with, with, with them. So a quick acronym, for how to use your body language is SOLAR, which is S, to sit squarely facing the counselee, to have an open, non-defensive body posture, to lean slightly towards the client to, or your counselee, to have a good eye contact and to be more relaxed and comfortable. So this is a good way to ensure that you are attending to your counselee in, in, a, in a comfortable way. OK, so I just have an example here for you. And uh, let's look at uh, uh, what we can find. So here's the counselor. The counselor is saying, so Tina, how did you enjoy the holiday you went with your husband last weekend? So Tina, she looks away from the counselor, averting her eyes and responding in a faint voice. Yeah, it was fine. OK, so do you think there's a mismatch in the verbal and the nonverbal reactions of Tina? If so, what would you do to address it? Or how would you address it? Yeah, any thoughts? Is there a mismatch? Let's look at, first of all, if there's a mismatch. Yeah. A big one, Pastor. OK, a big mis mismatch. All right. OK, so how would you address it? How would you bring this up? Uh, because you've noticed it, that what she's saying and uh, and how she's responding in her body language is definitely not the same. So how would you address it? Someone wants to try? I would uh, ask her uh, a slight question. Mm -hmm. For instance, I can say, would you like to elaborate more by what you mean that it was fine? OK, excellent, good. So. You, you, uh, you, what you're trying to do is not make an assumption that quickly. You probably want to hear a little bit more to see what she'd say. Wonderful. All right. Excellent. Anything else? Any other way that you would like to address it? Nobody? OK, so so something that you can can say is, um, uh, uh, Tina, was everything OK uh, through the through the uh, holiday, right? Um, you could ask a, you could just ask a question directly, right? When you when you have sensed that, you could say, Tina, was was everything OK during the weekend? Um, you could say that. Or you could respond by saying, you know, it uh, it appears that you that, that you that there was something that um, that, that there was something wrong. Is that right? So you could you could definitely ask when you're asking. Remember, what you're doing is you are attempting to help the counselor counselee see that you've noticed something. So if there wasn't, now let's suppose it was maybe a mistake or you know she was just preoccupied. She said, no, 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 it was actually quite fine. It was, you know, I really enjoyed it. You, you know, she'll bring that up. So it's it's always good to to recheck. Okay. Uh, so let's just try one of this. I you know generally when we are on a face to face, I kind of do these role plays. But never nevertheless, uh, what is one way that you could uh, help the, help these people open up? Okay, so let's try uh, this one. A nervous and scared teenager is forcibly brought by her parents to you. All right, uh, what would you like? How would you like to attend? So this definitely has to be verbal. Um, how would you like to attend and get the person to maybe open up? They're really quiet. They're not saying anything. They're just nervous and they're scared. They're sitting right in front of you. What could you say to help them open up? Um, if, it, if it's a teenager, uh, I think we can always 
started something they would love to talk about not like uh, anything that they came for or anything about the parents just a normal conversation i think just a normal conversation maybe yeah um what do you like to play or some you saying something that they would enjoy good excellent all right that's one way anything else maybe just a very um normal conversation like how are you doing um or something that can make them comfortable with you uh, mm -hmm. rather than intimidated okay um, okay all right anything else so something that i generally do over here is uh you know i say hi to them i say you know i appreciate them for coming in i said really appreciate that you come in here um and then i ask you know i'd like to it's it's like a curiosity you know i'd like to have, just ask you a question um you know if i were you i would be really scared sitting here do you also feel the same so i kind of help them to feel comfortable that it's okay to be scared it's okay to be nervous or it's okay not wanting to sit there uh, or i may say you know uh, i just want to know i really am interested to understand did you really want to come here or were you just forced by your parents and very often i i get get a, a very honest answer say i i, I really didn't want to come i i was i was forced to come right so in any way that you are able to pick up uh, on how you're uh, pick up on what what is happening and and move it into the next phase where where you're able to get them to open up okay all right we'll go to the next one the next one is the the um the entire range for attending by listening okay um now we you know so um through this uh, a lot about counseling is about listening right it's the it's one of the biggest ways that you show your counselee that you there is an ability to listen you are uh, you are you 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 choosing to listen so it is the ability to attend to what your counselee is saying to be patient to not step in to give them the space to give them the freedom to share what they need to so listening is that ability okay now what is the purpose of listening um uh, maybe this is something that we all do understand and we all know but uh, for us to uh, to really understand that it activates something for your counselee so one when you let your counselee know that you are listening and um what what is it that you are you're demonstrating is that you are attempting to understand what they're saying okay it helps them see that you're making an effort to understand what they're saying now what when you are listening you're actually also helping your counselee to clarify some things that they are talking about maybe this is the first time they're actually talking about their problem otherwise they are only churning a lot of things in their head but when they are talking they beginning to have a lot of clarity in their confused mixed thoughts that may be there listening also helps you are highlighting issues by stating them more concisely so what are you doing is maybe your counselee has told you a one hour story once you have listened you've hand picked maybe important things and you've stated out back to them right you've saying okay for all from from what i heard from you these are certain uh, highlights or these are certain places that you really want to focus and work on or this is what i hear you're feeling or this is how you're thinking about this so whatever the content is you're actually picking carefully by stating it more precisely and concisely for them now when you are listening you are also what are you doing you are also uh, checking how accurate you are in what you have understood or what you have perceived okay as a uh, from from their story about the facts as well as their feelings or 
their, th their, their thoughts. So when you are listening, remember listening does not only mean just using your two ears and being silent. There are other things to it, which which you which I will unpack for you. So the it it shows the accuracy of your assumption or your understanding about certain facts or about their feeling about where they are, and that's why it's highly important. Now there are certain skills of acting active listening. It's not just about hearing and listening to them. It's also something that you do to respond, which means. The certain skills of active listening are paraphrasing, clarification, reflection, or responding to feelings, and summarizing. Now, these are there are more. I've just picked up the most important ones. If you look at counseling books, you may find a lot more of other skills, but I've just picked up what are the most important ones. Okay. So as your counselee is talking, one of the things you will you may need to do is to paraphrase. What does paraphrase mean? It is you are bringing um, uh, the essence of what your counselee has expressed. So you're expressing uh, one, maybe the content or the meaning of what the 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 counsel counselee is saying, or it could be a series of different things that they're saying. Okay, so it it also means to restate it in different words. Now, because of the lack of space. And uh, uh, over here, I haven't bought about long stories, right? But I've just kind of put some things uh, over here to help us understand. Okay. So the counselee here, oh, sorry, I've written the counselor, it should be the other way, right? It's counselee is saying, I'm really doing my best to get on along with somebody, with my parents, right? So the counselee, counselor, what she, she's saying is, it's just restating something in different words. Oh, I see that you're trying really hard or very hard to be friendly with them. It's a restating of things. So especially when there are long stories and they've given you very, very minor details, which may not really have any impact for, for the situation. OK, like I went here and then I went there. 10 people were sitting there. They were wearing black and red. Then we were served coffee. And then we had lunch there. And then we slept over that night. Those details may not be necessary. So you filter out some of that and you restate what is what is absolutely needed. Now, how how is um, paraphrasing done? One of the, the, the important things to do is, is to restate basic ideas and basic facts. OK? So you're rewording the message and not parroting or repeating and not you generally you don't use the same words or you can use some of the same words especially some things that they use you know they say you know they, they may put it in quotes and say you know this is what they think this is what they think about the family so you can use that you know you feel that this this exactly words is what they use about it but it's basically using fewer fewer words without really changing the meaning of it. So here's here's a couple of examples, all right, to to help to understand that. So here the counselor is saying, I don't know about her. One moment she's really friendly, and the next time I see her, she's totally cold. So the counselor says, uh, it seems like you haven't experienced her as being very consistent, isn't it? Right? So you're, you're paraphrasing something the person said so that they could continue on with the rest of the story. Or another one, every moment there is something new to do, there must be 10 different things going on at the same time. So the counselor says, here, there are a lot of activities I see that you need to choose from, right? Or uh, counselor here, counselee is saying, he's really crummy. His degree is from a non-credited school. He has very little training, and he has a poor relationship with, with his wife. So the counselor says, it doesn't seem that you think that he's very competent. Right, so these some of the things it needs you it it it's important that you listen carefully so that you're able to reflect uh, what this what they're saying. Okay, okay. Would you like to practice some just so that uh, you know we have we have some idea of how to how to get this going? All right. So here's the example. I'm completely worn out. It's twice as difficult for me to get around now with physical disability. And my family thinks I'm feeling sorry for myself. OK, would you like to 
Anyone would like to attempt paraphrasing? OK, unless we try, we're not going to. Yes, go ahead. So Jeffna, thinking. <laughs> OK, all right, thinking. <laughs> Uh, I can try. Yes, yes, uh, go ahead, Divya. Yeah, uh, maybe something like this. Um, I see that you're frustrated uh, uh, because uh, of your disability as well as people are sympathizing over it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, something of that sort. Good, good, good. Very good. OK, one more person. One more person. You can put it up on the chat also if you don't want to speak. Okay, maybe I'd say something like this. Um, okay, you 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 really look exhausted trying to adjust uh, to the situation, and it seems that your family also really doesn't understand, right? So that's that's uh, that's a way. Okay, let's look at maybe another example. Uh, I've had it with my son and had to bring his lying with my husband. I don't feel all alone dealing with the issue now. How do you paraphrase? Oh, I don't understand the situation here. <laughs> you don't understand? It's OK, the son has been lying. And the, uh, uh, he's bought the line to the, uh, she's bought the line to her husband. She says she doesn't feel all alone. She's had it with Azad, which means, you know, she's, she's fed up. And because of, because of his constant line, she's bought it to her husband. And now she feels, she doesn't feel all alone dealing with, with the problem. maybe uh something like um you um you are most you're feeling more support you're feeling more supported as mm -hmm. uh, you could share this concern with your husband wonderful great so i'd say something like you know it sounds like uh, you're feeling much better after having talked to your husband about your son's line right so it's just a way so one, it helps you kind of consolidate all that you've heard, and you're, you're also reflecting back to, to them. OK? Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's another example. OK, never mind. All right, so what, what are some of the things you can use? So how, how can you start? What are some phrases you can use to paraphrase so it becomes easier? Like, so you can use, so what I hear you saying is, or it sounds like you or if I understand you correctly, or you're telling me that, you know, so all of this helps in engaging with your counseling. All right. The next listening skill, and this is really important, is reflecting feelings. Now, this is very much like paraphrasing, except you're restating what you think the counselee is feeling. So in this, you're adding, you're, you're like like I think we did a few examples in the previously. You know, you feel you seem to feel exhausted dealing with this on your own, or you feel relieved that your husband has. So that that was also reflecting feelings. Paraphrasing is about um, you know uh, it appears that uh, you're at peace right now after having discussed with your husband. So this it it adds in a certain feeling. So what are you doing here? It's showing your counselee that. Not only do you know that you've heard what is being said, but you've also added feelings and emotions to, the, to what the person is feeling. So it restates words, not just the, uh, the content, but it's also restating certain feeling. So let's look at this example. Okay, The counselee says, my ex-wife phoned me yesterday. She told me that our daughter is very ill after a car accident. I'm feeling very scared for her. They live in the Middle East, so I'm going to have to travel to see her 
and now I have been made redundant. I don't know how I can afford to go. So the counselor says, so you've had some bad news about your girl who has been involved in an accident. You're frightened for her and also have worries over money now uh, since you've lost your job. So the counselor is saying, yes, yes, that's right. So here it says, notice the counselor does not offer advice or starts asking how long he and his wife have been separated, but is reflecting the emotion of what is being said. That you know she's frightened, or she's um, uh, you know she, she's lost a job. You're not going into finding out how did you lose your job, or how did the girl have an accident, or why did you uh, why did you why were you separated? None of that. It's just really reflecting what she is saying. Okay. So shall we practice this? So the counselor is saying, so many things are going on right now. Another hectic semester has started. My dog's sick. My mom's ill too. I find myself running around trying to take care of everything. I'm not sure I can take it anymore. OK, someone wants to try? Yeah, we can say that uh, I feel that you're so tired of life. Uh, and there's a lot of responses from your okay. end, but you're okay. really trying to Okay, good, excellent. Or oh, something very simple as you 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 feel you you're feeling extremely overwhelmed by the multiple things that's happening in your life right now. Okay, so good, excellent. Um, let me see. Is there another example that I can put up? Um, OK, no. All right. So we'll go to the next one, which is clarification. Now, in clarification, what you're doing is you want to clarify what you think you have heard and understand if you're, and, and figure out if your understanding is right Okay, by using that clarity. So what, what are you doing here? You're showing genuineness um, on your part. And you're showing interest in what your counselee has to say. So they may not have completely given you adequate, full information. But this is where you are really trying to figure out if you have picked up exactly what they're saying. So some of the, some of the phrases that you can use is, you know, I'm not quite sure I understand what you're saying. Or I don't feel clear about the main issue. Or you're saying, when you said this, what did you really mean? Or could you repeat such and such? Like, for example, they will say something like, um, you know, we have a we have uh, an okay relationship. Okay, maybe she's talking about some relationship. We have an okay relationship. So, what do you mean by okay relationship? Right. So you need to understand that. So when so you can ask that when you said you have an okay relationship, what did you mean? Right. What did you or how do you see this? Or no, I'm I'm unable to pick up what exactly that meant. Would you help to clarify that? So that really builds up um, whatever the content and whatever they may be going through uh, in that situation. OK? And the last one that we're looking at is summarizing. Summarizing, uh, you know, as the word, which is something that you all would have probably done in school, right? It is putting together every content or all the main themes, the feelings, um, and maybe even the issues. So they are basically they are cutting down everything and bringing it to a close. Like for example, this generally happens in a after a session, right? So you say, you know, today we discussed about three things. We spoke about how you've been feeling about this, this, this. You've decided you really want to focus on this, and you feel this thing can be kept for later. Maybe the next time when we speak, we're going to be looking at this and this and this. So it, you're, you're just kind of gathering everything together, picking up the important pieces so that uh, it brings in more clarity, not just for you, but also the other person. So why is it necessary? It's because sometimes your counselee may be giving you a lot of content, you know, lots of lengthy stories and information. So. It's, it's helpful to keep the focus on the right thing. Or, you know, suddenly they are talking about one thing, but they've already gone into something else. Uh, they, they may be, maybe like usually in a couple session, they're saying, 
maybe the council um, the topic is about you know how how can we respect one another so one of them starts with yeah he can respect me by doing this this is you know yesterday when we went over there this is what he said and he refused to respect me and that's when my daughter also brought this up even she thinks this way and he just doesn't know how to um, you know how to be responsible for my daughter so you see how this entire start of respect has gone into something else so when you're when you kind of summarize you're saying okay this is what we spoke about you know this is where we are so you're helping them to stay focused and move away any kind of details that are unrelated okay uh, and you're also you you give them a direction you're helping them move in one certain way because counselors can tend to lose focus very often and move away from the point of discussion so it's like you're bringing them back when you are bringing to a place of summary now there are different kinds of summaries so the focusing summaries is usually used in the beginning to pull together the prior information you are summarizing what has happened in the previous session signal summaries are used to signal that you have captured the essence of a topic okay uh, so you've said okay i I've, I've understood that you're trying to tell me that maybe in your childhood this was what was the problem and you feel that's impacting your current situation so you said okay i understand that let's move on to the next one planning summaries are that helps to provide closure and are used to recap the progress the plan or anything that you may want to do ahead so depending on what stage of the counseling you are in you use these different uh, different kinds of summaries okay okay let's look at an example okay so the counselee here is a young girl at the beginning of the session she's saying i don't understand why my parents can't live together anymore i'm not blaming anybody but it just feels very confusing to me and she says this in a low soft voice with a lowered uh, with lowered moist eyes in the middle of the session she says i wish they could keep it together i guess i feel like they can't because they fight about me so much maybe i'm the reason they don't want to live together anymore and so the example of this is uh, the example of summarizing is earlier today you indicated you didn't feel like blaming anyone for what's happening to your parents now i'm sensing that you you are feeling like you're responsible for their breakup so there are maybe two ideas which may be contradicting to one another but through your summary you've actually bought about these two things you know you don't feel like blaming anyone but you seem to be blaming yourself right so that 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 helps in the counselee themselves seeing the kind of differences in the way that they have shared something so introductory phrases for summary um these are these are the key ideas you've expressed or today we discussed these following issues based on our discussion we agreed that we will do such and such remember that you should whatever what i have heard you say so far is dash 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 okay so these are uh, that's that's what uh, when when we're looking at um, summarizing now there are certain barriers that we see that uh, can come against our uh, our ability to listen and uh, you, you know it's important to really be aware of these these barriers okay so one um, when when you know you're daydreaming the person is saying saying a big story and you've gone off to sleep or you're in another world because it's a huge barrier you need to get back to the uh, to the entire uh, situation when you're thinking about your own experience you're saying oh you know and you've gone off on your own world the same thing happened to me okay remember you're not there to talk or think about your problem there you're there to actually listen to them okay maybe thinking about something quite different while the other person is talking okay or even rehearsing that is you're thinking about what should i say next what should i say back okay now she said this what am i supposed to say how am i going to go this and that generally happens when we are when we are new to counsel, counseling and that's happened to me very many times in the beginning and i don't know what to say next or we're filtering that is we're only listening to the nice parts of the conversation and not to the boring parts okay or we are judging where we've stopped listening because you've already said okay i'm sure this is a 
you know, she's an attention seeker, so best. And and you you've closed off your mind, okay? Or ignorance or prejudice, where you are, um, uh, you know, you're not able to. You you either have a bias to what is being said, okay? Or you've understood about a bias, and that in itself uh, becomes a huge huge issue in the way that you are able to listen, okay? The next one is attending by observation. Now, what is observation? It is paying very clear, keen attention to the behavior of your counseling. And a lot of information can be just picked up by your observation of them. Okay, So remember that while you are interpreting these, uh, these nonverbal behaviors, you need to always check back rather than absolutely concluding. It's, it is good to check back because sometimes, like for example, you may you you may know that you know when someone sits with their hands tied you know close to them it it it's known to be a very closed uh, attitude right but it it may not only be that it could just be that the person is quite comfortable sitting that way but it may give you uh, a clue to that okay so here are certain possible interpretations that these are possible interpretations it's a possible meaning okay. So don't look for uh, someone who uh, who's you know if you're seeing any any such expressions don't label them as that it's a possible interpretation. So a direct eye contact mean attentiveness. A lack of contact could mean a sense of withdrawal. Looking down or looking away could mean avoidance or preoccupation. Fixed staring could be uptightness or psychosis. Okay, remember this is only possible meanings. Okay, eye blinking could be anxiety or excitement. Squinting or a wrinkled brow could mean annoyance. Uh, dilated pupil could mean alarm or interest. Okay, what about interpretations for facial expressions? A flushed face, that is a face that's kind of red or something, could be embarrassment or anxiety. Please don't. You know, sometimes people have flushed faces when they just walk in from the sun. OK, so give it time, uh, even as you're, you're making these meanings. Eyes being wide open and mouth uh, opening is surprise or sudden insight. A furrowed brow with a tight mouth could mean irritation. It could mean a deep thought. It could mean even just a rejection Okay, of what someone is saying. Like you're saying something, and immediately they have a, a brow like that. They're, either they can't understand. Okay, or they may be. It's a rejection of what you're saying. Um, uh, the the interpretation for shoulders and arms, your shrugging of shoulders, could mean an uncertainty or an indifference. Slouched shoulders could mean sadness or withdrawal, shyness. It could also mean a bad posture. Folded arms could be uh, meaning a close, closed, a closed attitude or a closed being close to contact or having a distance emotionally. Open gesturing shows a lot more of openness. Stiff uh, or unmoving could mean anger or anxiety. What about legs and feet? When you're crossing and uncrossing could mean either yourself, especially crossing could mean a self-protection, or it can mean anxiety or nervousness or uh, depression. Foot tapping, you know, you're tapping your foot this way can mean anxiety or impatience. Stiff or controlled movements could be generally someone who's very close to contact or having a repressed attitude, or it could also mean someone has sore muscles. Okay, Body movement, when you lean forward, it's being attentive and showing interest. Uh, leaning away or back could mean withdrawal, could be rejection. Turning to the side could mean avoidance or a fear of rejection. Rocking or repetitive movement could mean anxiety, or a bad habit, or it could also mean someone has a disorder. Like there are certain developmental disorders that could have these rocking movements. Or habitual movements could mean impatience or a focused attention on something, or it could also mean a bad habit. Okay. So what do you observe? You you're by by doing this, by actually just observing them. What you're attempting to do is, number one, to find out uh, you're observing 
the way your counselee attends. Okay, you're re really looking for the way they uh, uh, they seem comfortable. They're uh, they're uncomfortable. How they appear in your session, and even as they are um, uh, stating certain things, how how are they how are they appearing? Okay, so what you you whenever you're doing whenever you have uh, a nonverbal when you're trying to observe a nonverbal behavior you're noticing to see if there is a conflict between their behavior and between their words to see if there's a discrepancy or if there's an incongruence in the way that they appear and the way that they're saying something so like for example the client the counselor is saying the marriage is the best thing that happened to them but says that her husband is unsupportive right so there are two things that seem conflicting to one another. Now, this is more verbal, but it's still conflicting. Okay, or, or like we saw in the earlier example, they've said that the holiday was really nice, but then has a really low keyed uh, expression. Okay, verbal. What do you observe? You you observe verbal keywords or phrases that they are using repeatedly. So repeatedly saying, "I wish things were better." without actually giving you any other information really states that you know there's something that that could be going on and that you may need to explore that further okay so by accurately observing nonverbal behavior you can actually gauge the effect of their words uh, and their actions okay uh, for example like you know when when a counselee comes to the counselor the counselor can gain some indication of how the, the counsel, counselee is feeling about the se session, okay, whether they're comfortable, whether they're awkward, just by the way they walk in, they take their seat and greet, the, greet you, you can actually um, make out the difference. So a counselor can effectively gauge this, uh, you know, and you, you can carefully gauge this uh, effectiveness of what your words, of how your words are coming across just through their facial expressions and through an eye contact. So observation is really key in, in understanding and working through this, OK? Now, something important that we need to know is this attending skill comes only by two ways. It cannot be done in a class. It can be done by two ways, by observing and by practicing. Observing, practicing. Observing, practicing. It, you cannot learn attending by reading a book or by listening to more uh, podcasts, right? So that is just, it has to come by actually practicing, okay? I'll just uh, show you the other video um, so that, you know, you can actually see how that's done. Okay, so if you remember, we we saw how the attending behavior, uh, you know, how she showed a wrong attending behavior. This video shows of how it can it's done well, correct, uh, a correct formula. Joanne, hi, how are you? I'm okay. I I I'm okay. I've been better. I'm I'm coming in with a, a new issue today between my husband and I that I just really wanted to talk to you about. So basically every time I try and schedule some some time together with him, just some, some quality time, he always manages to prioritize something else. So he'll get on his cell phone, he'll start um, texting with a friend or start gaming or start watching a movie. And it's like, I can't get the time in that I need with him to really connect. And it's become the source of frustration for me. Ah, oh, that, that must be so frustrating, Joanne. And yeah, in fact, you said that, and I just remembered my cell phone is here. I want to put it away because I don't want it to interrupt us. Sure. I'm really sorry that it was there, especially what you said about your husband. I want to make sure that I don't do the same thing. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, this. I mean, this is a really important issue for me that it's just I'm realizing more and more how much it is a problem in our relationship that we can't even make the time to spend together, you know, just engaging in something together. Of course. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, what did you see differently here?
Um, she was really listening, and uh -huh. she is also making the counselee feel that she is listening by uh, taking the phone, taking the call, uh, which actually shows that okay, she is listening, really listening to me. She understands my situation. Okay, good. All right. Anything else you noticed about the counselor? What the counselor is, is uh, leaning forward as a kind, little bit as a you know, as a sign of attentive, being attentive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also just tries to adapt with her situation by keeping her mm -hmm. phone back. Right. Uh, adjusting with her, uh, understanding her situation. And, uh, right. Yeah, people are getting in that way. Yeah. So, so she actually intentionally says, you know, I want to keep my phone back because I know that, uh, you know, I don't want to be doing the same thing. Uh, and I want to keep that focus on you. So she's actually addressed it. She's bought it. So, she, you know, she, she paid attention to that little thing that, she heard the counselee saying, you know, my husband's on his phone and that, you know, we can't get that. So she ensured she did that. You know, that's how detailed uh, listening happened. Okay. Any other observation? Also, uh, one thing was she said, like, if she's giving a kind of a gesture as, as if she uh, she understood and acknowledged, uh, acknowledged it by saying, like, of course, like she's giving mm -hmm. a... Uh, like an understanding gesture. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah, right. So you see how important maybe our initial, uh, even just an initial behavior can be that can actually break or make a certain session. Okay, wonderful. Any questions? We have around four minutes. Any questions before we close? I just had this question. I don't know whether it is uh, something that is can be covered within three minutes, but mm -hmm. just curious to know, like, uh, have you like ever encountered a situation where, uh, like, you struggled to uh, to really understand how to proceed? Like, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's kind of, oh, I don't know what to do next, uh, kind of mm -hmm. a situation. Just very often, yeah. <laughs> very, very often that happens. Um, so, uh, so generally, I'll tell you when that happens. A lot more it happens during couple sessions, not so much during individual sessions, but in couple sessions where probably you know they've they are they've gone berserk. They're really fighting. Um, to to one, the idea is to bring back calm. So immediately. You know, your mind's going into what should you do to ensure that you, one, that even as they're sitting in front of you, you bring back a sense of calm and uh, uh, are able to bring it to a closure where the heat of this has kind of plateaued, right? So that that sometimes becomes extremely hard. You just don't know how to how to proceed on further. So some of the times, when it's really hard, I actually tell them, said, OK, I'd like you to know that I feel stuck right now. And I'm not able to understand how to work through this. So I do I do say that. Because remember, as a counselor, you're also a human. You're also a person. You're also being involved in these conflicts. And sometimes it can be extremely intense, right? So letting them know I'm a little, I'm also struggling maybe a bit. Sometimes there are a couple of times that I've done, let's take a five minute break, all of us maybe, let's take a five minute break and then let's come back. So then I try and recalibrate, okay, as to how to bring this together so that everyone has kind of calmed down and then come back. So then I may start with, uh, you know, we just left off, we just had uh, uh, a certain situation where both of you did express how angry you all were about this. I want to refocus on maybe one or two things uh, highlight. So what I attempt to do is like, you know, I, um, so, something that I'm, I, I, I am actually am learning from, from a counselor, um, not a Christian, he's a, he's a secular counselor. He says, you know, when does a forest fire happen is when you're triggering the first spark or the first flame. So the minute that you go back and talk about, again, the same problem, it's going to erupt the same thing again. So he said, whenever possible, or whenever you want to douse a fire, you bring about something that will actually not create that spark. And one of the best ways to do that is to 
probably refocus on something that's maybe positive. So something that I'm learning to do is I say, okay, I know that this conflict uh, just took place. But let me ask you this. Despite the this conflict you've been having for this last one hour, what is one thing that you, you know, maybe appreciate doing together? Or one thing in the last one week that you found that you saw was a happy moment? So I try to bring them to a place of just rewiring their thoughts of negativity and looking at something that would have seemed positive. So in that way, my aim is to ensure that when they're walking out of the room, they're not going back with this bitterness, but they're at least able to feel a little bit of hope that, OK, there's one thing in the last week that seemed OK. So yes, many times I go through that, but I'm learning how to navigate it better each time. I think I get better every time. But still, not perfect. But I'm learning through those skills. Thank you. And thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's good okay. to know that we can be transparent. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. All right. If you don't have any questions, uh, maybe we can close with a word of prayer. Pastor John Paul, would you like to close with prayer today? Sure. Let's pray. Let's pray. Yeah. Gracious Father, we want to thank you for this time. Thank you for helping us to uh, learn a lot of things regarding how we talk to people, how we uh, uh, understand their burdens, and also to give them godly advices. And we pray, O oh God, as we continue to learn, we'll be able to remember and practice all this as we interact with people. We pray, O oh God, that we would move according to your Holy Spirit. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that... Uh, through each of our lives, you would be glorified, O oh God. And we pray that uh, people would be impacted for your kingdom and our lives be transformed, O oh God, into your image, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor John. Thank you, everybody. God bless. I'll meet you next week. Thank, thank you. you Pastor. Thank you. Thank you.